Good afternoon. Sitting in for Walter Cronkite, this is Brian Blankenship and welcome to ATS News and the business of being a student video series. This session will present you the top four things you need to know from Asbury Seminary's business office. So in true David Letterman fashion, and without further ado. The number four thing you need to know from the Asbury Seminary business office relates to how does the seminary bill students who live in seminary-owned student housing. Student Services handles the wait list and administering of the placement in housing, and so any questions related to that should be addressed to the Student Services Office. But the Business Office handles the billing for those who live in seminary-owned student housing. If you are in single housing, one of the seminary's residence halls, that charge will be placed on your student bill at the beginning of each semester, and that amount is payable in full, along with your other educational costs, such as tuition, etc., under the seminary's normal billing payment deadlines. If, on the other hand, you live in Callis Village or one of the other seminary's family housing units, those charges will be placed on your student bill at the beginning of each month just like regular rent and be payable and due at the time the charge is placed on your account. The number three thing you need to know from the Asbury Seminary Business Office is how you will receive your student billing statement on your student account. Well, it's easy. There's only one way, and that's the Asbury Seminary Student Portal. So at any time, you may log on to the Student Portal and view your unofficial Asbury Seminary student bill. On the Monday following the ad drop date each semester, that student bill will become official. But again, any time before or after that, you can view your student bill anytime you want to see what the results are. Or maybe you're just bored looking at the Asbury Seminary portal, and maybe you want to ask Alexa a joke. Alexa, tell me a joke. Here's a tip. If you're scared of elevators, take steps to avoid them. The number two thing you need to know from the Asbury Seminary business office is how to pay your student account. Students at Asbury Seminary have two options, online or in person. Online payments can be made through the Hire One portal, which is accessed through the student portal. Credit cards are not taken directly by Asbury Seminary for payments, but can be used through the Hire One portal. It is important to note that Hire One does charge a transaction fee, currently 2.75% of the transaction, but you may also pay online for no fee by using the automatic draft from your checking account. Or if you still just like to pay in person and meet nice, friendly people like Varie. You can come to the Asbury Seminary Business Office from 8.15 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Monday through Friday and pay with cash or check. We are closed during chapel hours but otherwise, come visit us and pay your student bill in person. And the drum roll, please. The number one thing you need to know from the Asbury Seminary Business Office is, when is my student bill due? Great question, and we're glad you asked. The student bill is due two weeks after the ad drop date. The ad drop date is the Friday at the end of the first full week of classes. As we told you earlier, the official statement becomes available the following Monday, so you will know what your student bill is. The payment then, again, for your student bill in full is to be paid by two Fridays after the ad drop date. And this late breaking news just in. A bonus item. It is very important that you know the seminary's policy for dropping a single course or courses versus withdrawing completely from the seminary. 
If a student, unfortunately, finds themselves in a position that they need to withdraw from the seminary, the seminary will follow the federally mandated prorated refund policy over the first six weeks of the semester. On the other hand, though, if you find yourself in a position to need to drop a class after the ad drop date, there will be no refund for dropping that course. Therefore, it is very important that you determine your courses before the ad drop date and avoid dropping courses after that time. And that's the way it is. This is Brian Blankenship, ATS Afternoon News. Good night.